guys, let's paint butterflies. I also wanted to show you my Doodle Bee license plate. If you're in Omaha and you see a white VW bug, it has the updated plates, but uh, you'll know it's me. Be sure to wave hi. And then I've got, this is the art table I paint on. So I thought you guys might want to see that. And then that white squiggly thing is what I put my phone in to film and it, uh, it wiggles. Oh, and then there in the background, oh, I can't do that. Um, it's a bee painting I'm giving away tomorrow. All right, let's get started. Okay, so this is a traceable uh, that's in my 21 page downloadable PDF booklet. It has eight classes in it. Um, you can download it totally for free or it's pay what you can afford. Uh, there's more details on my website. You can go to AnnieTro.com, uh, go to the classes page, and then there's a link right near the top for the traceables. So this um, class is normally a take-home class for fun for my students. But I thought since there wasn't any samples in my booklet and what the heck do you do with it, I thought I would paint it and show you what you might do. So I think I'm going to cut, rather than trace them all just like that, which you could do, I'm going to cut just a couple out. And then I'm going to scribble on the back, which you can see in my bookmark video. I won't make you watch that again. And then I'm going to put them, transfer them down onto my watercolor. Uh, this is a watercolor pad, which I show in my tips and tricks video. All right, I'll be right back, guys. Okay, so one thing I wanted to show you is I traced two butterflies after I scribbled on the back um, in order to create what I call cheap transfer paper. We used to do that when I was in school. I don't know if any of you remember that. And then I thought I'd point out I've got a 6B pencil. In my previous videos, I said you can use a 2B. It works, 2B pencil, like a regular school pencil works per works great. I was gonna say perfectly fine, it works great. Um, this is a little softer. Some of you may like it a little better. It's a little blacker, but it'll also smear more. So you'll have to just figure out what you like. But I was going to tell you that you can scribble over it again and just use the same uh, butterflies. You don't have to keep using new ones. If that makes any sense, you don't have to do scribble on all these. You can just scribble on a couple of them and put them wherever you want on your page. So I didn't start far enough over. So then I just turned this one upside down and it fit a little better. I just thought I'd show you in case that gives you an idea. <laughs> and now I'm gonna trace it. And I probably will stop the video because I can see the camera shaking. Okay, I got my butterflies on my paper. I ended up doing two of them upside down because I want a little bit of room when I cut them out. Because I'm gonna uh, put these on my front door. There's a bunch of people in my neighborhood that walk. Um, some of you may watch my chalk, your walk videos where I'm doing art on my sidewalk. Uh, anyway, I want to decorate my front door, but you could uh, cut these out when you're done and make a greeting card so you have a little more dimension to the greeting card. Um, kids could do watercolor, but if you don't have watercolor, use color pencil, use crayons. Um, it'd be really fun to decorate uh, a child's bedroom door with these. Just something to brighten up your home, your world a little bit. And I also wanted to show you that I used these guys several times. I just re-scribbled over them and they worked quite well. Okay, so the next what I do, oh, I don't know if I have one. Hang on, I'm gonna grab my eraser. So next what I do out of habit mostly is I lighten my pencil lines up with a kneaded eraser. Um, you don't have to. But if you do watercolor over it, then it'll set the graphite and you won't be able to lighten it. Um, some watercolor artists sketch lightly and leave their pencil lines right on there. You also could just use a regular eraser to lighten them. It's up to you. So I'm gonna do a little of that. I show this in another video too, I think. I think it's the bookmarks video. But, oh, see, look at that wiggle. I gotta get a tripod or something. 
I think there you can see it lightened it. And I'm going to go lighten all these. Okay, I think I want to put some masking fluid on some of these butterflies. Um, I really have a thing for polka dots. And then you want to use a crappy, what I call a crappy brush. And then I mark them so I don't forget that I've got a masking fluid or something else in them. So I don't use them for painting. Um, I think I'll do round dots. Well, maybe I can do square dots too. So I don't know if you can see that. Oh, so this masking fluid I talk about in my tips and tricks video. I don't want to tip it too much. Um, you can use any brand. Um, I like masking fluid with a little bit of color in it rather than the white ones. Because you can see it a little bit better on the paper. But I bet you in the video... I don't think we probably can't see it. I can't even see it. <laughs> I'm just dropping little dots on here. Um, so one of the reasons why this is one of my, well, it was a send home class for fun for my students um, is because it really takes the pressure off. We're not trying to make it look like a, a bird or we're not trying to do a sky. You just use the material, the watercolor materials or whatever materials you want to use and just enjoy it, kind of relax. Not a lot, not hardly any big decisions and you don't worry about how it's gonna turn out because you're just playing with the color. And you, believe it or not, doing that actually helps you become a better artist or a better watercolor artist because you're just focusing on what the materials do on the paper, what the color does, what colors you like, how much water you like. All right, so I'm gonna wash this off, and if you don't wash it off right away, it just pretty much glues your bristles together. Oh, and then I mentioned before in previous videos, but I have one water for cleaning, which you can't see, it's off camera. And then I have a clean water for when I wanna grab clean water and add it to my, my pigments or my watercolors here. All right, let's try the square one for fun. So I'm just gonna dip it in there. I couldn't tell how much I had. You could pour this out into a little pan or a little container. A little easier to see. Well, I think those are gonna turn out to be, so I'm kind of looking for a square shape, but I think those are just gonna kind of be bigger blobs. But it's a square, flat brush. We'll see how that turns out. You can tell I'm thinking because I'm not talking. <laughs> and my voice got gets quieter. I would love to see what you guys make with these. I wonder if you couldn't make a mobile paper punch a hole in the wing and string them together. That'd be cute. I really appreciate when you guys comment on my social media post that helps so much that helps the post be seen by a lot more people i so appreciate i was overwhelmed i don't know if you guys saw that video but i was super overwhelmed oh hopefully my head's not in camera i was super overwhelmed with um the amount of people that downloaded my traceables oh, sorry about that um and sent money that means so much to me i can't tell you these are scary times for all of us. I just, I thought that was amazing. All right, we're gonna let that dry. And then I'm gonna ink a couple. Um, this is just a Sharpie pen because it's permanent, waterproof. Um, you can ink before you paint or you can ink after. I like to ink before because sometimes I use a lot of water 
and then the paper buckles and then you have to wait longer for it to flatten out and dry to ink. So this way it's just a little bit quicker. Oh, one thing I'll tell you before I shut off the video because you don't need to watch me ink the whole thing. Um, normally I turn my paper, makes it easier. Um, and then you wanna, like with painting too, it's easier to pull and then you can kind of push a little. But it's so much easier to pull to where you're going than to push. So this would be a push and that would be a pull. So normally I would turn my paper so I could pull it. All right, be back in a sec. Okay, I think I say okay every time. <laughs> okay, so I'm noticing that I got my masking fluid on thick, which isn't a problem, but it's not drying. So I'm gonna take a hair dryer and then hold it a little, you know, don't hold it right next to it. You could, you could blow it and change the shape and see if I can't dry it a little faster. All right, we are looking good. Um, I think I'm gonna use a smaller brush. It has a little more control. You can tell I use it a lot. It's stained. This one looks almost like a brand new brush. Um, I use this one for, ooh, we should do splatters. Hopefully I remember, we'll do that. Um, I decided to ink three and then three of them aren't inked. And so what I call this next step is sort of waking up some colors. Um, sometimes if you wait long enough, you have to wake them up again. But I'm just putting a little bit of water in some of my uh, pan colors here. Um, I like this one, I think. I, th I know I said in a previous video, it was $15 at Blick Art Materials. Um, it, ha it has good pigmentation, meaning there's good color. Uh, in it. Oh, that didn't make much sense, did it? Um, if it doesn't have much pigmentation, then the colors are kind of wishy-washy. That's a little bit clearer. Um, and it wasn't very expensive at all, which is nice. Okay. Uh, what is the brand? Angora Watercolors. Made in Germany. Germany. Okay. You can tell I'm going to use pretty much all the bright colors here. Okay, so you can paint these dry. Um, I'm just feeling to see if that's dry. I might give that a little more time. Or you can paint them wet. So what I'm gonna do is, what you probably can't see is I'm just wetting the butterfly shape. And even I can't see it all that well. This is where you could turn your paper um, some watercolors actually work on an upright easel and they kind of like that everything, when they want things to run down, they can put a lot of water on it and then the color will run down. Alrighty here. And then sometimes if when you get really particular about how wet the paper is, you tilt it a little bit and look for the shine. So if you want something to really bleed and run, you want it shiny. If you want it just a little bit wet for a little bit of easier blending, you wait till it soaks in. But you can still see it's wet. Okay. So let's just play here. Um, I'm just gonna drop some color and see, ooh, there's something else you could do. Let's see if I can pick it up and have you see it. Let's try that again. And then have it run. I need a little more water. Ooh, that's kind of fun. And then you can drop more color Cool. So that is what I think art is for. I just had a moment there where I'm like, oh, that's fun, that's pretty. I like that, you know, my biggest decision was to use purple and to play with the water. 
you know, in times like these during the pandemic, I think that's even more important where you just play a little bit and you don't worry about huge decisions, you know, just kind of step back and relax a little bit. You know, I was going to mess with that, but I think I'm going to leave it. That turned out pretty cool. All right. I might let that dry and then go the other direction. No, no, actually, let's play with it. Let's just see what happens. So should we do a complementary color? That would be yellow. Um, yellow is on the other side of the color wheel from purple. You can Google a color wheel. Or orange would be gorgeous. That's not too far off. Let's do orange. It's going to be a little stronger on camera. All right, and I'm going to pick this up and tilt it a little bit and we'll have it run. Let me see where it wants to run. If it doesn't want to run as much, you can add a little more water. I just splattered because I hit the camera. <laughs> That's one way to splatter. It's not running. Let's try. There we go. Kind of help it. Okay, that was unplanned, and I think that's really pretty. Now we could define, do we want to define the body a little bit more? So I'm just washing my brush because I'm thinking for one thing, and then I'm using some clean water to make sure it's clean. You could add a third color because it's wet, so it's going to bleed. Should we just see what it does? So I'm grabbing some blue. I don't know if you can see. If I poke it, my paper's buckled, but that's okay because either you would tape down a loose sheet on all four sides, or I've got it on this pad which I showed you in the beginning, which is, I just think they're slick. All right, let's try this. Oh, that wasn't much color. I'm gonna grab some more color because I think I want it dark. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. Let's be a little... I think we'll just go with that. Fun. I like that one. I hadn't planned what I was gonna do with these. That's really pretty. Oh, there's a splatter there too. Okay. Um, let's do something similar with those. So I don't know, you know what you could do for me? is in the comments, tell me if you like, you know, I mean, watching me put water on a butterfly, isn't that exciting? So tell me if you'd prefer I'd shut the video off, or of course you could fast forward. I may have just answered my own question, probably just film it and then you can decide how much you wanna see. Of course, I'm also trying to keep in mind that it takes quite a while to upload. So I'm trying not to film too long. So I just thought of something because I just did it. Normally I kind of paint with watercolor left to right because you don't want to stick your hand in the wet paint, which I did, but it didn't seem to really hurt much. <laughs> or sometimes top to bottom or you do sections, let it dry, come back and paint some more. All right, so should we just do this one one color? Because it's gonna have white dots when we take it off. And so then we probably want a darker color. Hmm. Let's just start with red. And I really like that drippy thing. I might do it one more time. Oh, look at that. Okay, that's just plain old fun. Oh, I like that. That's not what I expected to happen. Let's just do that. And the pink's kind of running down. Reminds me of a tie-dye t-shirt. 
You know, I want a little color there. I'm gonna off, I'm gonna clean out my brush because I got a lot of paint in it, and I'm gonna grab a little clean water and see if I can. For some reason, I want that lighter. And I wanted to find the butterfly a little bit here. That's pretty. I'm gonna grab a little color. Oop. Hope you can see that I start painting and I forget if I go off camera. So I'm grabbing some, ah, and I hit the stand, grab some water. Do one little color up here, maybe? So the only reason I'm making this darker, which kind of ruined how cool that was, is because I wanted to find my edges because I'm going to put it on my front door for the people who are walking the neighborhood. Um, normally I would have left it because that was cool. But when it's that light and subtle, they're not going to be able to see it from the street. These aren't very big. So I'm gonna see if I can, yeah, it's not, it doesn't wanna run, I think it's drying. All right, I'm gonna set that down. Are we still on camera? Cool. I want a little, ooh, that's kinda neat. I think one of the most interesting things about watercolors when you just let it grow and you can paint quite quickly. Um, I started out licensing with watercolor, but there are so many, oh, I'm gonna paint around that shape just so you can see the dot. There's so many watercolors that license that I switched to uh, acrylic and I had a lot more, ex I've had a lot more success licensing my acrylic art because I don't, there's just not as many artists trying to do that. But acrylic takes a lot more time to paint. So all I'm doing is I want my dots, my blobs to show. So I'm just making sure there's some color around them. <laughs> and then one tendency, which I am, I do all the time, is to overpaint. Which I'm kind of doing now. But it's fun to play. <laughs> Oops, let's let me bring that out a little bit. Fun. Now I'm not sure if I'm gonna come back and draw on the antenna with ink. Or maybe just let this dry a minute. Excuse me, sniffing. And then maybe I think I might just come back in a minute. Oh, see the water on my brush there. You wanna, you don't want that to drip on your paper. Come back in a minute and uh, add the antenna. And see here, blood outside the lines, but that's not a problem. And I kind of like here that left the white. Okay, let's do another one. All right, let's do a dry one. Um, how about green? Got some warm colors here, let's do a cool color. This is a pretty limey, bright green. Which sounds good for a body of a butterfly. How 
how about maybe I'm just gonna grab a little more water. I wonder what it would look like if we did that. I don't know if it'll make sense with the dots or not. Grab a little water. Oh, there we go, I got a little stronger. So that sort of shows you how to do a circle. They're never um, perfectly round. That one's a little better than this one. And then it's also bigger. So I'm gonna go back and make this one a little bigger, maybe. A little darker. That's kind of fun. I think I want them darker so the dots show. Sorry, I can see the camera wiggling. let that dry and then maybe flood in some color. See what that does. Okay, and then I don't know if you can see it, but these are pretty buckled. I wouldn't take this paper off the pad until it goes flat. Uh, assuming you want your butterflies to be flat, if that doesn't bother you, then have at it, you know? Take it off whenever you want. Okay. Um. I'm gonna, this is kind of a periwinkle color. I don't know what I wanna do. How about if we just outline it? So I'm pulling, because it's a lot easier than, you really can't push a brush. You can kind of push a pen. And as I mentioned before, I would turn my paper to get it at an angle that I like. It's comfortable for me, but then that doesn't always work for video. So I'm gonna pull. And since I have quite a bit of water in here, I'm not having to go get water from my container. So there I kind of pushed and then I'm not real happy. So just because I tell you to do something doesn't mean I always do it myself. I grabbed a little water there. That's this is how you get it actually helps you improve your painting skills because you just kind of like I instinctively knew I needed a little more water there and that's just something that comes with time um, you can't get this wrong the whole point is just to relax hang out um, hang out with the kids if you're doing it with the kids get away from the kids if you need a break well, I've got too much water but and see, I just kind of keep going over it until it's sort of what I want. And if it just isn't as dark as I want, you just finally go, okay, fine. The paint's the boss. The paint, the water, the paper, they are definitely the boss of me. And so it looked like it would be simple. Oh, I put my hand in the wet paint. I didn't do my own rule of working left or right since I'm right-handed. So it looks like a really simple butterfly project. You can make it as complicated as you want. I would totally love to see what you do
That's so fun for me. So all that is is a little bit lighter touch. You notice how the, those are fatter? Cool. We'll let that dry because I don't know what else I want to do with it. Well, we're going to splatter. So we will just splatter it. Um, what else could we do? I don't, for some reason, I don't really want to do stripes. We could paint stripes and then trim it out. Hmm, I really want to do more of that because it was fun. Maybe we'll just do that and I'll turn the camera off and show you what they look like when they're done and then we'll splatter. All right, I'll be right back, guys. I want to show you this one as in process, even though I said I was going to show you when I was done. So I'm adding a lot more water up here. I'm not sure if this is going to work the way I think, but I want to show you. I'm going to grab some magenta. Actually, I want to... Sorry about the wiggle. Oops, I want to... I don't know if I can get enough. Here, I need to put some more water. And my hand's probably in the way. I put, I'm putting some more water in the paint. So I can grab a ton of paint. There we go. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to grab a little more paint, a little more water. There we go. I think it's fun to watch it run. Oh, and look at it puddle down there. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Oh, I think I'm going to stop it there. Fun. That actually was pretty close to what I wanted to show you. If you keep um, tilting it, I would I would stop eventually so you can see more of the color. It's starting to look a little gray right there because they're pretty close to complementary colors. Red and green are complementary, and this is teal and uh, pink. But you can play with it, see what you what you like, and have fun with it. Okay, this one is so wet. I just used a hair dryer on it for a while and you can see it's still running. But I wanted to do the same here with different colors and maybe not quite so wet. So I'm letting it run again. Maybe we'll help it a little. because I want to dry it so I can do this one. So while this one was really pretty when I first did it, it's not working so well showing you in a lesson. Now, this one I should just let sit. And that um, would have been much better. But I want to move on and paint the other ones. All right, I'm going to dry it some more so it dries. I'm going to try this again because it was gorgeous until I over... Uh, I tried to dry it so I could move on to this one, and then it it bled more together, and then he, he saw me trying to pull the color out. It's still pretty, but let's try this again. Um, I'm going to use colors closer to each other in the color wheel. So let's grab... I'm going to add a little water because it's drying out on me. Let's grab a blue. I'm going to get ready to pick it up and tilt it. Let's see, can you see that? Oh, I'm just grabbing more blue. My other hand's in the way. And then we'll see if we can just let this one dry. You can tell when I'm thinking, <laughs> so I think my voice gets quieter. There.
So I'm just watching it. All right, let's just let that dry. And then we're gonna come back and I'm gonna re-wet. Well, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do because then it won't run. I mean, it'll run. Let's let it dry and see what it does. Do my original thought there. Nope, I just hit the camera. Okay. Let's go back to... Well, I was thinking darker green, but I think that might just overtake my circles. Let's do yellow, huh? And I'm not crazy about this yellow. In a previous video, I showed you about a tube of uh, cadmium yellow. Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to show you. So a lot of artists joke about this because you're, you're always dipping your brush in your water. And then if you've got a cup of coffee, you know, you dip your brush in your coffee because you're not really paying attention. A lot of times I have a, a drink with a lid so I can't get my brush in there. Now, a little paint isn't going to hurt you, and most of the colors are not going to hurt you. But like cadmium yellow has cadmium in it. Um, while a little bit isn't going to hurt you, I don't recommend eating it. It is, I believe it's toxic, you know, and they're coming out with uh, non-cadmium colors now quite a bit. So yeah, you can also buy those. But um, a lot of artists have a beverage with a lid on it. Because when you're painting and you're not even really looking at your water, you end up sticking it in your in your coffee or your mug. All right, now I'm gonna just, so that's that was dry. The paper's dry, and now I'm just adding some water, which doesn't really show so much with the yellow. That looks pretty much, whoop, that's my outside the lines. Looks pretty much the same color, so let's change our minds here. Oh, we'll go back to my favorite thing I've been doing here today. Let's drop some orange into the yellow. So I'm gonna do the left wing. I've just kind of loaded it up. And also that way the dots will show. If we have color everywhere. Cleaning my brush. All right, let's grab, I have a lighter orange, but let's grab a darker one. Or you could do red. Hey, actually, let's see. Red's really strong, so I don't know if we'll get an orange. But if we use this lighter red here, let's make sure I'm still on camera. Yeah, you can see that. Let's see what happens. Oh, well, that's kind of pretty. I don't think it, well, it is a little orangey. The red's so much more heavily pigmented than the yellow. And it's just a deeper value color. Oops, I just grabbed yellow, didn't I? Let's grab some red. So while these aren't my favorite color combinations, you can see it and you can do a color combination that you like better. But those spidery dots are kind of fun and then we're gonna have Oh, the paper is going to be white dots. Actually, I think that one could be a really fun one. I would just prefer, I personally would prefer different colors. Oh, I don't need to wet that. I'm just going to put yellow on there. Oh, here's something I do. So I don't know if you can see when I paint, but I like anchor my hand, or sometimes I'll tuck my pinky in. So I have sort of an anchor. Makes it a little easier and you're a little less wobbly. And if you don't like to anchor with your pinky, don't sweat it. It's like learning to write your alphabet, learning cursive, you figure out. The only reason I keep picking up my hand is because this is kind of wet and I get worried. Um, You'll figure out your own handwriting. That's what makes art so cool is while we're all doing butterflies, everybody's turns out completely different. 
And you can go over the yellow with, or the green circles with the yellow if you wanted. I'll just blend right in. Okay, that's because green and yellow are near each other on the color wheel. All right, so red, the lighter red. Oh, look at them bleed. I guess it's kind of a, I'm like, oh yeah, red, bleed, blood. That was a little morbid. All right, should we just leave that alone? All right, I'm cleaning my brush. That's still really wet. I'm gonna have to use a hair dryer on that. All right, let's do this one. I'm thinking, let's wet it now so you can see what happens. So this is like a dry on wet, like in my tips and tricks video. So how many ways can you do sort of a tie dye type butterflies? Pretty much what this is turning out to be. You can do your butterflies however you want. It's just what I'm, what I seem to be liking today. So I'm picking up a little. Can you see how it bloomed a little? But that's all right. That just makes it more interesting. All right, do we want to do another blue? No, no, we got blue there. Try light pink. Wake it up. I'm just gonna kind of scribble it on. Cause it's gonna bleed. I got a lot of, you can see I got a lot of water there. Especially there. Pretty. Let's leave that one alone. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I've got a lot of water happening here. And I wanna come back and I wanna put uh, antenna on these, on a couple of these, maybe fill them in. And then I wanna do this one. So I'm gonna use a hair dryer. You have to be careful with the hair dryer in this one because if it pushes the water, it's gonna push the color. So you wanna hold the, the hair dryer away from it. And I'll be back. So I really like what happened here. This is similar to this one, but it was wet and I scribbled. Well, actually I think this was wet, but I made sure I left some white spots. And then it bled into the blue and look, this pink. So if I use this pan set a lot, I would get to know that if I want a purple, this pink puddled over onto the blue and it was wet enough that it remixed and it made a pretty little shade of purple, which I think is really nice. Um, now this is quite dry, everything's flat. Um, I used the hair dryer on hot for quite a while. You could come back with a marker and trace because I really like how these look. Um, a permanent markers, I recommend. Oh, and I was thinking while I was painting uh, earlier that if you just wanted to download these and have your kids color them, um, gel markers might be really fun. I'd love to see some of those. Okay, um, what do I want to do next? I think I'm going to do the antenna. And then we'll wet this. Oh, and then splatter. We're almost done. Alrighty, so probably green antenna. So I don't have a ton of water. Oh, I'm just picking up some color. Oh, that's a splatter. And I'm just gonna draw the antenna. Pull, pulling is easier. Now if I, you want, you could put a little dot. Oh, and mine aren't the same height. I actually like that. Um, that's totally up to you. And then this one's kind of crazy, but I think it might be fun when we get the, when we rub the masking fluid off. Well, here, I bet you I could. Yeah. Oh, I know my camera's probably shaking. Hey, I'll be right back. 
So look at these. So I rubbed it off with my finger. Uh, in my tips and trick video, I also say like you can use, I'd use a clean eraser. This one's pretty clean and you can use that to kind of get that. It's like rubber cement almost, that masking fluid off. Um, but look, so the one color butterfly is now becoming one of my favorites because I really like the texture and the pattern and it's more simple. Sometimes simple is better. Although this one's kind of fun. I like it better now that I've got the dots um, off of it. But notice I didn't let uh, the green dry. So I've got a little smudge there. You know, I might. It's going to wiggle the camera, but I might. Oh, look. I don't know if you could see the smudge before. But sometimes when it's still kind of wet, or sometimes you can just take a little of the paper off. Um, depending on what it's for... You could take an X-Acto knife and just take some of the paper off too. I think I like the, oh, see there's a little, can I take that little red dot off? Cool. I should call this one my tips and tricks video. I just cleaned it up a little bit. And then here, as long as I'm erasing, I might be able to if there isn't color of it. Oh, I don't know if you could see, but I was able to get rid of a little bit of the pencil line if you don't like it. But where the paint went over it, it'll set it into the paper. Okay, that's probably enough wiggling. So I'm just gonna dump this. I'll be right back, I'm gonna dump this in the garbage. Okay, are we lined up? Oh, let's line up a little high here. All right, let's finish this one and then splatter. Oh, and I was gonna do antennas. Let's do antennas first. I think the only one I need to do is that one. And then maybe fill in the... So I suppose we should do red antennas. Because I just gave a lecture about how one color can be nice. I'm going to make this one longer. And you notice how I pushed that one and got away with it? Just saying. I don't always listen to my own advice. Okay, and then should we do a little pink? I'm just cleaning off my brush. So dirty water, clean water, paper towel. And then while we're at it, I don't have any color. A little blue. All right, so what color should we use? I'm gonna actually, well, no, I was gonna turn it, but I think I can just tip it like that. Um, green. I wanna do something that's kind of the same side of the color wheel. Orange would be, no, 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 yellow. No, orange would be the opposite the color wheel, this one. I had a little brain glitch there. Yellow is opposite color wheel of purple. Mm -mm. Let's try this teal. It's a pretty color. Or let's do this light one. Well, so now I forgot that I want to put water down first. I'm washing my brush, drying it off in the paper towel a little bit, grabbing some clean water. Alrighty. So what I'm not sure about is how far to put the water down. It's gonna run and then it's gonna mix. I think I'm gonna do the whole thing. Oh, see there, I picked up some color, woke it up on the, uh, so maybe I'll stop because I don't like that. All right, we'll just do that and let's see what this does. All right, I decided on the teal, this one, right? Can you see it? Okay. Grabbing some more paint. So what happens is the paper starts to buckle and that's why the, sometimes it, it, or there's no water, not enough water. That was not much water, but it also 
starts to run to the outside because the paper's buckling up in the middle. Oh, I think this is pretty. I think these two might be my favorite. This one was super cool. I just had way too much water on it. Okay, I think I should probably stop. You guys are probably watching me going, stop. All right. Fun. Tree splatter, just because I don't know if everybody watches all my videos. I'm going to dry this. Well, I don't know if I need to dry it, because then the splatters would. So if you splatter it wet, they'll expand. If you splatter it dry, they just stick. Um, if you don't want all your butterflies splattered, cover it cover it with a piece of paper and then just splatter those two, cover it with a paper towel. But I think we'll just splatter everything. And then this brush would work if you got it. I really like this long one because it wiggles more. What color should we splatter? Probably like a purple. It'll show up better on film too if it's a darker color. On film. <laughs> I think I just dated myself. On video? You guys should put in the comments what you call it. Okay, so I'm just picking up a lot. And then you might want to wear like an apron or something or some old clothes because a lot of these colors will stain. Some of them will come out. If I hold it up here, it's going to splatter a bigger area, which I don't know if you can see. If I hold it down closer, it kind of controls it a little bit better so it doesn't get on your clothes as much. Pretty. Yeah, I'm gonna grab a little more. So then I now at this stage of the game, I'm trying to control it, which is always interesting because you really can't. Oh yeah, those are kind of expanding a little bit. I don't know if you can see it. That one expanded a little bit. That's fun. So now that it's getting drier, I'm getting finer little splatters. Which I don't know if you can see on camera. Do we want to do one more color or just call that good? I think we'll call that good. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. Oh, I'm kind of out of camera. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is part of my downloadable traceables. I have eight classes. Uh, a lot of the classes have steps. This one didn't, so I thought it'd be really fun to show you what you might want to do with it. Um, it's also great for kids. It's a great low pressure project. You can make a whole bunch of them and decorate a door or a wall. I'm gonna put these on my front door. Um, the traceables are free. If you need to download them for free, please do, please, please do. I get what the pandemic has done to a lot of our uh, jobs and we're all sheltering at home. Um, if you can afford to send a little bit of money, I suggest $10. No worries, no worries. But I also am planning on doing another set, another booklet of videos down the road. What else do I need to tell you? I guess thanks so much. I really appreciate all you watching. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Well, I said goodbye and I thought this might be helpful or interesting. So I slid this into the opening uh, in the side of the pad and took my watercolor paper off the pad. You can see that in um, these the tips and tricks video. And then I realized, so watercolor, this is 140 pound watercolor paper. So it's kind of stiff. Um, you could cut them out. I would put something underneath it, like a piece of cardboard, or I've got like a cutting uh, mat. You could cut them out with an X-Acto knife um, and get them close to the shape. But all I'm doing, and just to make it a little easier, so I thought I'd show you, is I just cut it out. Oops, I don't know if I, you can see that if I'm off camera. So I'm not, I'm just kind of cutting a white, edge around it, and then I go in a little here. 
They don't have to. To make it a little easier. Oh, I can kind of smooth it out. And then if you see on this one, I, hit, I buried it. Um, I got pretty close. That's fine. It's still pretty. All right, I just wanted to show you that quick. Honest to gosh, now, goodbye for real. I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.